Hi, good morning, everybody. This is Kel once again. Hi, you missed my voice. <laughs> All right, uh, you can hear me loud and clear. If yes, give me a thumbs up or give me a like. Yeah, of course, um, don't expect me my voice to go fly up. Uh, for people who doesn't know what happened to me, I'm actually now staying in the Concord Hotel at Orchard Road. And I'm actually, yeah, I'm diagnosed with COVID positive. Yeah. Uh, don't ask me, is it Omicron or is it uh, COVID? Well, they don't tell you. In fact, I asked the staff, the staff said they don't know until much later. Uh, I'll be here for about 10 days. So I'll be discharged on the uh, on Wednesday next week. Um, yeah. Seriously, I have seen quite a bit of stuff here over some people are really, really sick. Some people aren't, not, not here, but in the in hospital. So I kind of blessed that within three days, I recovered the uh, majority of it. But now, of course, still uh, a bit of panting once in a while. And I'm um, still, uh, when I breathe, there's a bit some difficulty, but overall, I'm okay. So I'm glad to see all of you once again, guys. Um, I enjoy myself doing this. So no worries. I'm good to see all of you. And of course, like today, there'll be a lot of good stuff that I prepare for you as usual. You know, for me, I, I don't like to give um, half stuff. So if I'm going to do an MAO like now, even my, given my condition, I will do all my best for you. So kindly like and share this um, MAO right now to all your friends, because this today MAO, especially when it comes to the alternate market views, well, there's something very important because you don't know this, probably not from the mainstream media, or maybe you've seen it in the mainstream media, you probably didn't pick it up from there itself, is that actually Goldman Sachs have been selling some shares, okay? Now, not in Pacific, we share is sold, but in overall, apparently Goldman Sachs has lost, apparently, yeah, not to confirm yet because I don't have the exact data, but they may have lost quite a hefty, substantial amount and that was in 2021. Now, 2021 stock market had been pretty decent, right? Up by 21% on average for the S&P, Dow Jones, and NASDAQ. But incredibly itself, uh, they are down by quite a bit of money. So this is quite interesting. For a company called Goldman Sachs actually can lose money, okay, then the question is this, how about the normal retail crowd? So this is something that I want to share with you, yeah? Okay, all right. Now, pardon me, guys. I got a bit of suddenly, I got this bit of painting spell suddenly. Yeah, I'm not too sure why. Maybe suddenly I just leave my head too fast. So, guys, give me a moment. Let me just uh, calm myself a little bit. Yeah. Give me a while, yeah. Okay, I'm probably the only trainer that has COVID and still give classes to public members. This is something that I think I probably need your, you guys to let your friends know that this guy is crazy enough to do all this thing, yeah? Yeah, indeed, I should rest more, I understand. But you see, if I rest more, I, I feel that I can do too lethargic and then I'm, it may dampen my, my spirit and my condition to recover ASAP, yeah? Okay, all right, let's just start our MAO right now. Thank you for all your... Um, your encouragement here and there and advices. I appreciate that. Okay, let me just uh, begin on yeah. Now, because I'm doing a single screen right now, so a bit of difficulty for me to play around with this. Just give me a bear with me. Uh, there'll be a lot of uh, intermittent breaks here and there, and I'm going to switch screens and stuff because I'm only going one screen at the moment. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. I think. Okay, so today is the 20th of January, 2022, Thursday, all right. Now you can see from my background, you, you do see that there's a lot of events ongoing right now. We have Joe Biden, he just came out this morning. In fact, stating that he is, he is quite happy with his performances, but we know that his approval rating at the moment now is really at the record low level. And of course, we're talking about the COVID cases in America is really still climbing. And the tension between Russia and US is really at a very borderline cases, which means that anything that um, can happen will, can be very catastrophic. And of course, we all know that last night, the US market was actually positive for moment because the earnings was fantastic, but the market just came off. So all these tells you that a lot of things are going on at the moment right now and things can get worse. 
So the NASDAQ has broke below the 10% mark. Now, is it a good time to buy? I'll show you uh, some of the stuff later and you make your own final decision, yeah? Okay, all right. So disclaimer apply as usual. Do know once again, my job is to share with you what I think about the market. Your job is to do your own stuff, okay? You do need to do your own, your own risk management. You need to do your own strategy and then you trade according to plan, okay? All right. Um, it's okay, give me if I forgot to do something there. So I'll put a share. Sorry, my bad. Hold on, just give me a minute, guys. Share to group. Just give me a minute, guys. I need to do a lot of stuff here. What well, single screen? I have a lot of uh, restriction here. I'm not used to double screen. One, yeah. And I don't have to go fast because I'm actually using a hotel Wi Fi. So maybe it'd be too heavy for that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Should be fine. Okay, all right. Okay, now let's start, start with the joke of the day as usual. You know, I like to start the day with a happy note. Okay, so shall we use the death ray, sir? Nah, let's really pound them with the deliver of the rate hikes. Now, I am not too sure, do you all notice this, but you know, I saw on the um, some of the Facebook social media, that prices in Singapore, actually food prices is increasing. And of course, like last year as well, when I was telling people that if wonton mee will hit this uh, $5 per bowl in about a year's time, and everybody was laughing at me because that was a three fifty, dollars And I would say that, Cal, you are being a nutcase as well. Wonton mee have been $2.50 to three fifty dollars for the longest of time. It will likely stay at a maximum is $4, okay? I told them this, look, yeah. Probably from three fifty to four dollars, maybe it will go towards there. But you must understand when you add the cost to the flour, it will be the cost also added onto the meat and the vegetables, like eggs and stuff like that. And that together will create the wonton meat. So when that all these things add, like if everybody add by just a five cent to ten cent on every ingredient, then that will add up. You see, it's not that collectively. The one time me itself from three fifty to five dollars is not because that it was well, the guy jump in because everyone every every vendor every producer supplier if they increase a little bit five cent to ten cent along the way you will hit the five dollars and to be told now we can see that it's happening and of course um the the yield has hit one point nine percent and this is really very scary and because we are not even near the point of the um fair reserve you know. Uh, stopping putting money yet. They're still putting the $60 billion every month. Imagine that when they really stop, this is going to go crazy. That's why there's a very high chance that the yield will go to 2%. Yeah. So that's the reason why, if you remember this, okay, let's take a look. On the 19th of January, which is yesterday, now during my time here itself, right, I actually purposely do a smell watered down short MAO for about six, seven minutes. And I, uh, I tell you guys that, you know, I talk about the 10-year yield. I talk about treasury bonds. I talk about the US dollar, the VIX, and Tesla, okay? So I, I told you guys that the yield will hit 1.9% yesterday. And I also said that, right, the VIX will go higher. And of course, I say that Tesla may come down. So let's look at the, the, the VIX first, yeah? The VIX, as when I show you this, this chart yesterday, that's before the markets um, went up. You can see that I put that the VIX will go higher to 26. Okay, so let's just see whether can we uh, take a look at the screen later to see the VIX going 26. But I did mention that if it goes higher, it will hit about 26, 27 first, and there might be a bit of pullback on profit taking because the this time the VIX came in from 19, okay, from 19. But after that, the saw right, I suspect that once it breaks 26, 27 level, right, it will go higher. And this time it may go to 36. I repeat, it may go to 36. Yeah, this is my personal view on the VIX. Okay. Now, of course, I talk about Tesla, remember? Now I talk about Tesla. I said that Tesla um, the day before was trading at 1030. Okay. And I said that if Tesla is to sell down, 
Tesla will hit 994. Okay, I gave a figure, 994. And the thing is this, yesterday after I did this uh, video, I, I put it on Facebook and then after that, I showed to my friends, you know, some of my friends telling me, Kel, come on, man, you are sick. Just stay in a hotel and rest. Don't keep on giving such a call because it's ridiculous. Tesla will no go down below $1,000, okay? My friend actually tell me this, Kel, rest, okay? You need some rest because your brain is not functioning well. So this morning at about 6.30 a.m., I received a message from him and said, Kel, I don't know how the hell you did it, but Tesla really came down and closed at 9.95. My God, how the hell you know that Tesla will actually go to 994. I mean, seriously, I mean, you must have some what, connection with Elon Musk or something like that because look at the way the market closed. This is exactly what happened. This is not, this is where I forecast the number. And this is exactly, this is what happened the next, the next day, which is today, this morning. So guys, if you think that I did a pretty spot on call on Tesla, can you keep the word Tesla spot on for me? If you can do that, that'd be lovely. And that is going to be some, um, this uh, perk for this here. If you give me the love and light right now, texting, I'm putting the love, light, but emoticon, that'll be very lovely from you. Yeah, the thing is this, when it's not, I mean, I'm now in a hotel, right? I got no crystal ball. I got only one laptop here. But you must understand how I get these numbers because it's the same. They, they repeat in cycle. That's why I say they trade the boys. It's not anything different or special. Is that because I've been following the boys, we track the boys and we know exactly what they are doing and we can give you the specific figure. This is the scary part. And of course, I've been doing this now, even in this current situation right now, when I'm in a hotel with no access to other, other stuff, I can still do this. This is quite scary. And I tell you, there's more to come. All right. Thank you very much for those who can kill that last spot on. Yeah. Okay. Now remember, okay. If you remember, oops, open. Okay. Now, do you remember on the 6th of January, um, that was like two weeks ago, I told you guys to be very careful of the stock market, especially the third week. Remember, those people who remember that I actually said this, I said by the third week, start of third week of January, be very careful of the stock market. Do you remember? Do those who remember that I said that the third week of January to be very careful, please key REM, all right? Now, I gave a specific time, and I told you that, right, but the third week itself, right, the S&P 500 will likely be tipping downwards to 4,500. Yeah, that was what I said. And I gave you a figure. I said that in six months' time, the S&P 500 may drop all the way to 4,250. 4,250. So, again, when, when I was saying this, it's all right. Again, I got a little bit of thing that I'm crazy because then the S&P was 4,700 to 800 level. I said that, yeah, I understand. I said that it will go higher. In fact, I said that the first two weeks of January, the market will go higher because the call for Santa Claus rally. I said that it will go higher. But I said, but the third week of January must be very careful. And of course, I gave a strategy called a 1515 formation okay, strategy that I basically uh, leveraged on, on Larry Williams chart two. So if you have missed it, right, I will suggest you go to my trade with the boys, January the 2nd. There is a very interesting video, okay, that more than 2,000 people have watched it. So take a look and you can actually see what I have to share with you, okay? For those who miss it, uh, watch it. For those who forgot about it, watch it again. For those who really need to verify this, yeah, then you can try it out and leave your comment there, right? There are 300 more comments over there, okay? All right. And uh, if you can, if you're gonna like, know, like tell you just saying, you know, there's no words, okay, then we'll worry. I already put down words, okay? On the 6th of January, about 1.15 a.m., yes, yeah, Singapore time, 1 a.m., I put there, the stock market is near a peak and a bigger pullback is around the corner, okay? I've done my research meticulously and I believe that there will be a good time to turn our danger to opportunity. And of course, uh, the first thing is that to turn to short the market so that we can collect all the arrows. And then after that, from the bottom, we buy. And that was what exactly I had mentioned during the um, review that was on the 8th of January, two days later, all right? So remember this little picture I told you, right? Basically. Uh, right? Meaning, right, we're actually going to borrow these arrows from Chow Chow and, you know, wait for the right opportunity to strike back again.
So all these things itself tells you uh, with regards that we have already prepared ourselves way in advance. So of course, uh, traders, if you uh, have hit, hit, my, hit my advice, you would have shorted the market, the NASDAQ especially, because I was very adamant with my call on NASDAQ. I kept saying that it's, as long as the yield goes up, the NASDAQ will fall. There's no other way out okay, on this. And of course, it really, really happened. Yeah. All right. So I hope that you guys have uh, heard me loud and clear. And now let's look at this one. Now, in fact, someone asked me this this morning about 9 a.m. Kel, today, Thursday, would you be doing the uh, guess the number? Yes, I'm doing. <laughs> okay, I think that everybody's still waiting for this. Okay, guys, so today is the initial jobless claims, and I, I'm definitely here. So guess and win. Okay, I give you 30 seconds right now. Guess what will be tonight initial jobless claim? 30 seconds starts now. Give me a while while I go and get myself uh, a little bit. Okay, yeah? so key your numbers right now. Okay, last uh, 15 seconds. Now, my personal number today, um, I'm actually looking at a bit of a higher number. Yeah, I'm looking at a higher number. I'll give my number in a short while time. Okay, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. All right. Now, um, I can see that average you guys are doing about one, two, sixty, two, two, two twenties plus area. Yeah. Now the highest I saw is two sixty eight. Okay. Let me just take a look. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's Kelly, yeah? Okay, let's see what happens. See who will win this 19.88 in a coin. I think this number, 19.88 in a coin, no one have ever hit this number and win. The next number, 21 point, 22.88 in a coin, sometimes is the one that usually you hit that point and most people get it correct. <laughs> let's see whether the pattern repeats. All right, so last night, the Dow Jones, you can see that it was pretty flat all the way. So it was no damage, okay? It was only until about 2 a.m. Singapore time whereby the selling started to accelerate. And of course, this is where things got into uh, worry. Because I told you before, guys, in the morning, I mean, during the US morning, if you are buying upside, that's okay. But in the evening, uh, sorry, in the afternoon for them, if they start to do profit taking, right, it's actually quite a very dangerous spillover. So what happened is that, right, if the market is on a downward trend or the boys are actually selling, the common thing you see in a US market timing is that the front part, the first half of the day, they are buying or at least sideways. Then the second half, they are selling. This is actually a very dangerous positioning. Yeah, So that's the reason why I'm kind of worried for the US market right now. Okay, so the NASDAQ fell 1%. And of course, it had hit the correctional territory. Now, let me explain this first, okay? So um, in the technical world, okay, not really 100%, but this is how uh, most of them explain this manner, okay? Is that when you had hit the all-time high, okay, at all-time high, okay, APH, uh, all-time high, the first 5% that pullbacks from the high, we call it as a pullback, okay, a pullback, yeah? Now, a pullback is very welcoming because usually when the market hit a 5% mark, it will rebound from there and go back up again and break the new or break the high and create a new all-time high. So that's why a 5% pullback is always a very welcome note. And that's usually a lot of short sellers will short in and then they get caught, okay? So that is for the bull market condition, yeah? But the thing is this, if the market goes down to 10%, mm, this is where we call it as a correctional territory, okay? Correctional territory is where we are right now, means that from all-time high to the 10%, that means the 10% of the all-time high is called correctional territory. Now, this is a very dangerous figure because this figure itself 
is to tell you that okay, the market is between is now at a point that is not that uh, uh is is not that uh safe, okay. But usually, usually, yeah, write it down. Usually, the market may rebound from there. Now, the choice of what you can see already, right? The five percent mark is that usually it will rebound. The if you hit ten percent, it may rebound. Okay, may yeah. But once the market hit the 15%, yeah, this is where it gets dangerous, really dangerous, okay, the dangerous level, okay, the dangerous level. So at this 15% level, right, it has to rebound because if it doesn't rebound from the 15%, it will go down to the 20%. And we all know the 20% means is that the very key pivotal between the bear territory, really. Okay, that means that if the market already goes below the uh, 20% percent, it will enter the bear territory. So the thing is this: if you ask me, as all right, most likely the Nasdaq has to rebound from here, has to because this is the 10 percent mark. But if the market continue to sell, it will accelerate the selling very fast because when the market is off 10 percent, right? That means that majority of the counters are now off quite a fair bit. The market will come down to 15% very fast. So that's why at the 10% mark, it has to recover. Okay. So got it. So if everybody got, everybody got this understanding stuff, right? Please keep the word got it. Okay. G O T space I T. All right. If you understand what I just say, this is very critical because that will be a very, this, this, um, this, this sharing here now will be a very uh, important part of our this technical sharing later yeah yeah this is very very important so please understand this so five percent you call it pullback ten percent correctional correction territory okay uh 15 percent the danger level the 20 percent the bad territory of course again different people have different calling depends on you know what type of uh, vocabulary they want to use but you can give the graph idea yeah okay got it huh okay good so from there itself, right, you, you can see that now they are watching this very closely. And of course, this is the NASDAQ. So you can see the typical thing that uh, usually happen in the uptrend is that the market, this is all-time high A, and then the market broke the all-time high with B. Then, but the thing is that then after that, it's a pullback of 5%. And after the market recover, but this time around, the market recovery at C wasn't anywhere near to B. And when that happened itself, right, once the market loses the support, the market usually will sell. Yeah, this will actually happen on a technical ground. Okay. And of course, uh, it was because of the yield. The yield has hit 1.9%. And I can say this route, it will hit 2% within the next three weeks. Easily, it could be even by you know, a few more days. But I say again, 2%, once it hit that, the alarm bell will ring. And that is where by people watch the Federal Reserve, I don't they do anything. And don't forget that South Federal Reserve is supposed to be doing their FOMC meeting this month. So from the way that uh, Joe Biden is already giving the blessing to tell Jerome Powell to press on, definitely it's all right. Uh, most likely we will see um, the interest rate will be hiked in March. Okay, I repeat, in March, yeah? So that will pressure the market even further. Okay, so let's look at the Dow Jones yesterday on our TWB chart itself. So on TWB chart yesterday was pretty clear. The market actually opens uh, very near to the pivot, yeah? And it hit the pivot and reverse. Now, when it hit the pivot and reverse, it's not a good sign because it's more to sell because the KSI was red in color and the market was below the MA30 and below MLP. Now, MA30 is a shorter time frame in our TWB system. So to be below MA30 means the current momentum itself is weak. And of course, to be below MLP is even weaker. And the one that's holding the fort that's very important was 35,343. Now, yesterday, the market holds it up. Yesterday, yeah? yes, the, okay, the day before, sorry. The day before, the market hit the MA200 and it held there and recovered. So the market basically got a breather. But when the market yesterday try again and break below 35,343, that's it, the market sell. And yesterday, I already draw for you on the um, TWB uh, Global Group. I already tell you that if the, nest, uh, the Dow would go down, right, it will go down towards the pivot. And really, the market goes down to the pivot beautifully. This is how crazy the system is. Everything you can see on the chart right now, the numbers and stuff is all there. You don't need to even lift a finger to even draw or, you know, 
find. Even if you do the MA, it'll find what's a pivot point, a technical point. You don't need the TWB system will recover this all for you. And that's why, and my chart is very clean, right? Clean, clear, and very consistent. So that's why you don't need to think too much. You just follow the, um, the way of using it itself. You should be able to do well, yeah. So let's take a look at uh, how it works yesterday. Now, first of all, yesterday, the market was the donging and then we had the first star, okay? And that tell us that the market itself is at the BNB at high. You draw two imaginary line like this. So once the market couldn't go above the, the, the resistance line and it goes below the support line, you know that that is most likely your fall. And you can see that it really happened. Now, what was crazy at the bottom was that the bomb appeared. When the bomb appeared, the bottom is all right. You do the same thing. You draw two lines, a high and the low. And if the market stays above the line, that means that the market's a buy. So it's as simple as that. When you see a star, you sell. Or see a bomb, you buy. And of course, as some of the market must follow through. Now, what was scary was after that, because a new BNB created, right? So a new star is born. You do the same thing again, and you notice this very scary now. Take a look, guys. So the market actually um, went down. When it breaks here, it goes down, right? Then after that, there were multiple green dots at the, on the chart. Now, we see multiple green dots, right? It tells you that something big is going to happen. And of course, it's the same thing over here. And of course, when the market did this and it couldn't, you can see now, clear screen again, you draw the two lines, okay? When the market couldn't stay and go above this point here, it couldn't go above, right? The market was a sell. So what happened? The market sold down all the way itself, just like that. And of course, did we have any, any like, you know, um, you know, like uh, in advance notice? Of course. Now look at your own indicator. Look at your own indicator. When a market actually recover like this and goes up, right? I'm sure any indicator like MACD, Stochastic, Bollinger Bands, RSI, all of them will be pointing upwards, right? Calling you to buy. But look at our KSI. It stayed red all the way. So this tells you that, right, the boys was not actually buying. They were actual sellers. So they are lifting the price higher so that they can dump onto the retailer. So the retailers, if they jump in right here and sell, right, they'll be badly hit by the market. Yeah, this is very, very crucial information that only TWB student will get the benefit of it. Okay. All right. NASDAQ, yeah, talk about that later, yeah. Okay. So how about gold? Now, yesterday I was very bullish on gold already. Now look at it, guys. Why was I bullish on gold yesterday? First of all, it was actually above the MA200, MA30, and MLP. So yesterday the gold was above the three lines. Now, when the market, any market is above the three lines, it's very bullish. This is something that I've been advocating for the longest of time, and I'm glad students pick it up. And of course, yesterday was a classic buy because the opening price was just next to the pivot. So when the market crossed above the OP and the pivot, it was a buy. So it was a four reason to buy. And of course, with all these good reasons in sell, right? Okay, I gave a specific figure. I said that if um, gold is a go higher, it will hit 1843 to 1846. Now, why 1843? Because it's a BMV target level. 1846 is a chocolate bar. And this chocolate bar has not been used. It's fresh chocolate bar. So that's why I believe that it might be able to go towards that particular point. So with all this information, all in time, in, in, in lieu of this, right, you can, you can understand why, you know, for us TWB student, we, we know exactly uh, what to look out for, and uh, why are we buying and stuff like that. So these are all the very important information that um, you know only students can appreciate that, yeah? Correct, okay? So you, you can see right now, guys, that the market was ding-donging the whole day itself. And then after that, what happened? Okay, the market started to figure out its, its track, stays above the pivot one, okay? KCX was there. After that, all the way, there was no blue bars. So even when the market pulls back over here itself, right? No blue bars means the market will keep on buying. And truth be told, the market kept on rally all the way, as you can see on the screen right now, all the way have been very strong into the upside, yeah? So again, this, this proof that why, you know, traders really enjoy using our system because it tell you exactly what you can do out for and you don't need to think about overbought, oversold because this overbought, oversold indication is all created by the boys and their whole, whole reason of it happening there is what they want to basically confuse individuals, yeah? In my opinion, okay? Got it? Okay, all right. 
All right, so because today, I, I mean, I got no double screen, it's very difficult for me to keep on flashing in and out the news site itself, so I will just skip news today, so apologize on that. For TWV student, TWV students, the news, I already collected the news, I will just upload later to the market news site itself, so that you can watch it, yeah, you can read it on your own, okay? So same thing for the important uh, information, that one also be down there. Yeah? So these two piece of news, all the, well, I think I, I, I prepared about 10 articles. You can watch them on the news segment later. If you have not, if you don't know where's the news segment for TWB student, don't worry, contact Susan. She'll bring you into the Telegram group, okay? It's free, you don't need to pay for it itself, okay? Now, but primary, I'll just talk about this news is that now, again, like I said earlier, earlier, is be very careful with what Russia and US is doing around the border. Anything can happen. If anything, just anyone make a slight mistake, any soldier make a slight mistake, as well, right, things can get very terrible. That's the first thing. That's a big news here. Second thing is just that about now, a lot of charties are getting worried because of NASDAQ. So I told you for the 10% mark, be very, very careful. I can see that now at the moment, the market seemingly is recovering and moving higher, right? Uh, that's the reason why I said that the market may be able to push higher because today the the uh, PBOC is all right. They come up with a new implementation and that is the, it basically um, helped the market quite a fair bit uh, to push it higher. Push the stock market overall higher, yeah? Okay. Sorry, give me a moment there. Yeah. Okay. So now I told you there's some very important information for you today. And this is what I think you are here for. Let's take a look here, very important. Now, first of all, right, the retail investors are getting a little bit fatigued already. Definitely now, one whole year, last year, 34%. The peak itself, the ISM the market went up 34%. So any, any investors, retailers should have made money. But the thing is this, when you look through yes, on the Reddit, and you look through this, uh, all the forums, uh, you notice that not every, in fact, a lot of investors or retailers are not making money. Now, why did they why, why are they not making money when the SMP is up by 34%, 34%? Well, the reason is because I can tell you this. When the retailer make money, they do not make money from the blue chips. Okay, they make money from the, the so-called the, the penny counters or the smaller counters, which of course they, the first six months of last year they did very well. So they make a lot of money. And that's why Cathy would also make a lot of money. But the last six months itself, right, all these SPAC counters all came down. The, pre -I the IPOs came down. The, those stay-at-home stocks came down. Like counter counters like Zoom, all these came down. Peloton all came down. So when all these things come down, so, right, and retailers thought that, okay, now you're coming down, let's buy cheap because of the oversold indication. That's very wrong. There's no such thing as oversold or overbought. That is the, this trick is done by the boys. They put it in and you get trapped by them. You follow them. If they are selling, just keep on selling. If they are buying, keep on buying. That should be the right way for trading. But again, it's very good. Right? It's going to be very good for me to go and explain who's right, who's wrong. But at the end of the day itself, you tell me, Kel, but I use my overbought, oversold, and I make it money. Uh, yeah, correct. But do you make it overall? That's a key point. So what is happening right now, the individual investors now have bought again, even though the market has came off last week, right? They've been buying. And of course, if they've been buying, they've been losing. And that is a scary part because how much money would they left? Because if they keep on doing this, they run out of ammunition just a matter of time. And because of that, it's all right. Let me tell you this now. Now, the thing is this, based on the Bloomberg uh, source, they are actually looking at at least three rate hikes. But at one stage, it's all right. They may even look at four rate hikes this year as well. And some market now is speculating 50 basis points. I think that's a bit crazy though. Okay, for this coming March. But... Definitely now, it could be a quarter, is minimally a quarter. To jump 50 basis points, it's going to really rock the market very badly. So I don't think Jerome Powell will do that unless something really crazy will happen in seven days. So I don't think that will happen. So I don't think uh, you need to be worried about that, okay? But the thing is, this is something very, very interesting. Now, look, look at this fear and greed index here. Now, the fear and greed index, I was expecting it to be like, 20s now, right? <laughs> With the market down so much, Nasdaq down so much, the fear and greed index at 59. I mean, this is something very interesting. And I've been tracking fear and greed index for quite a long while over years. I, they have been quite reasonable, accurate. Then I realized that the competition is interesting. I realized that the CBOE, CBOE uh, five days average, right, the put and call ratio is now at the lower level. Hey, that's interesting. With the market coming down quite substantially the last two weeks itself, right? The, the, the thing is this, the, the put, people are still uh, selling put away. They buy more calls. Hmm. 
That means that people are buying more, more, more calls. You can see that during the last five trading days, the volume in the put has lagged in the call option by 60% as investors make bad, bullish bet in their portfolio. Wow, that means that people are actually very bullish. And that's the reason why you can see that the investors, the retail investors are jumping into the market. So now the question is this, okay? Please write it down somewhere. The retailers are jumping into the market, but the question is who is coming out? Because the big market is coming off. So this is very scary and not the end yet. Now take a look at this, a net new 52 weeks high and low on the New York Stock Exchange. By the way, I saw some of the news uh, names here today and some of you guys have, um, you know, have been supporting for me for quite a long while. Like I think Jimmy, I see Carol, I see Bridget, I see Edmund. Thank you guys for supporting me until now. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so the net 52 weeks high and low on NYSE itself is actually still at the low end. That means that, that means the retailers are not making money, but yet they are still buying. So the question is this, if they keep on holding this, they have to hope that the market go higher because if not, another three weeks to go or four weeks to go, the big word will be margin call. The big word will be margin call. And if margin calls comes in, then the selling could be really very drastic, yeah, traders. Now, the last one is this one here. This is the one that is very, very important. Please write it down somewhere, guys. Now, the S&P 500 is slightly below its 125-day moving average. Now, this is a moving average that some of the funds uses, and it's not actually at this point. Now, that's the reason why some people are speculating that today the market will recover because of the S&P now is actually fidgeting around the moving average. Now, it's not wrong to have this call because usually it will rebound. And I told you guys that the, um, the NASDAQ itself, right, most likely will rebound because of the, you know, the correction territory level. Okay, so as I say that, I suspect that the market will rebound, yeah? But of course, again, I, I want to stress this again, uh, that is based on the ideal note that the market actually knows um, to hold on this level. If the market do not hold on this level, then we have a problem because if the market doesn't hold at this particular level and breaks down, the selling could be very, very disastrous. So that's why I suspect that the market will rebound around these few days, then be very careful, especially the coming few weeks, yeah? Okay, now, of course, this is the one from this uh, Morgan Stanley, yeah? Now, Morgan Stanley, as you know, is one of the very few firms that are calling for sell. Mike Wilson, right? Remember this guy? Now, he actually did this, shows that this is a PMI chart, okay? The, um, this is the manufacturing PMI versus the S&P 500. Now, you look at the blue, the, the lighter blue is the PMI. Now, look at it. Interestingly, the PMI and the S&P 500, in terms of percentage change, seemingly, wow, it's literally like it's a carbon copy, okay? But the problem is now the PMI data is actually here and the S&P is above, okay, in terms of uh, movement, yeah? So which means that if let's say the S&P is to really follow the PMI, okay, then what will likely must happen is that the S&P has to drop to 4,000. Now, this is scary because not S&P 500 now, as we're reading it, is at 4,600. Yeah, so the thing is that how can that be, right? Let me just double check where's S&P now. Let me just double check, yeah? Yeah, the S&P now is trading about 4,600 level. So of course, again, it depends on how you see it. Some say, no, like, yeah, maybe the PMI is a bit delayed. Maybe you'll recover back. Of course, again, everybody got their own way of looking at it. But you look carefully in 2021, when the PMI data was coming from the high, which I was covering this last year, I already tell you, if the PMI data goes down, the S&P will follow. And indeed, it really happened. So now the thing is, is your question is, now, not only this is not from the this is not from just only but if you take care, of, Mike Wilson is actually a bear market, bear guy. So maybe he give you all the bear side. Okay, this is good. But do you know that last two days is all right? One company single-handedly bring down the market. One investment bank actually single-handedly um, basically created the selling in the Dow Jones. Anyone can tell me what what company name is that? Can you tell me which name, which company was that uh, in US investment bank? The last two days, their stock price came down despite the earnings was really okay. But because they actually have a very nasty uh, forecast for this year. So that's why the stock price itself came down. 
And of course, it has motivated some, most of the financial stock to be down. Okay, uh, we have some names coming up already. One of them is from Fred. Fred say JP Morgan. Okay, Liu actually say Goldman. Yes, actually the answer is actually both of them, but primary Goldman. Now, let me explain to you why Goldman Sachs. Okay, let me explain this to you. Take a look. Now, this is Goldman Sachs uh, harvesting progress of balance sheet equity portfolio. Okay. Now, uh, this is actually for this year, just 2020. Ma. So what happened is that you see this, my God, that means uh, Goldman Sachs itself, right, have actually sold off, sold off quite a bit of shares last year. Yes, they sold off quite a bit of share last year. And as some data actually shows that Goldman has lost as much as 500 million, sorry, 500 million, yes, correct. Uh, eh, sorry, my bad, 500, yeah, million shares. I mean, I can't confirm this. I can't M or B, really. I can't remember that. But I know that the thing is this from this chart itself definitely tells you Goldman has sold off a lot of shares last year. So the question is this, Goldman actually lost money in stock market last year. Yes, according to the reports. So a Goldman Sachs can lose money. Think about this last year. Okay, so this year is uh, what you expect to, to see then. That's the reason why so David Costin, although have been calling for buying S&P will go higher and you go to 5,300 for S&P, but the, the numbers from their own company doesn't show, reflect the same thing. So somehow rather not too sure who to trust, but be very careful on this, okay? Just be very careful on this, okay? That's my point. I will try to get you the uh, exact numbers tomorrow during my uh, next F M M MAO, all right? So I apologize on that, yeah. Because it's very difficult to switch screen right now and I don't want to disrupt the whole sharing session, okay? Okay, let's continue. Okay, so that is all that I'll share with you for in terms of the uh, important news. So hopefully you like this uh, session. So now I'm going to do is go to the charts, right? You guys are waiting for the charts. The bull goes move, the bank goes group, and the lemming go is different this time. So give me a while. Let me just switch my screen a bit because I need to start a double screen. So I need to do some stuff in between. Okay, here we go. Okay, guys, you can see on the screen right now. Okay, first of all, very important is that I mentioned to you very, very clearly about my view on the Shanghai A50, right? And I said that when it breaks down, it will go down towards this big particular figure and the figure was 14977. And what do you see? The market really come down to that particular level, almost missed by 10 points, and then immediately recovered. And of course, yesterday ended as Doji. So obviously, Doji, directional day, next day, straight away today because of the PBOC data, the information was so good, it pushed all the property market higher. Okay? So again, this is how beautiful our technical analysis is. Okay? Pretty cool, right? Just give me a minute, guys. We got some messages coming in again. Hold on, yeah? Just give me a moment. Sorry, just give me one minute, yeah? Just give me one minute. Let me just clear some messages that's coming in right now. Okay, all right, thank you for, for waiting, thank you. 
Okay, so would the China market continue to push higher? Most likely it will. There's a gap somewhere around here. So I believe that it will go to about 15,630 range itself. Yeah, this likely will likely happen. Now, of course, PBOC can still continue to push up higher. They can do the triple R to move the thing higher. These are all the tools that the government can, the central bank can do. But I would like to warn these guys. This movement is to prop the market so that it will give them a bit of room and breather because the market has been coming down quite a fair bit. Yeah. But of course, they're now going to do this changing of the charts here. Just give me a minute there. Okay, let's take a look at everybody. Now, this is the chart that I draw. Um, let's get one more round. Okay, here we go. Okay. So if you look carefully how I draw this chart here itself, right? You can see this. Uh, let me get it smaller for you to see it better. Okay, you must understand that how I draw this. Huh? So this is the point A, the low, and I use the word, this is point B, okay? So we have the, all the Fibonacci, right? So you can see that all these levels are there. Okay, now I'm going to clear up some of the lines because it's a bit cluttered right now. I'm just going to show you something very important. Okay, so this is better, right? Okay, yeah. So now if you look at it, this chart, okay, on your screen right now, you can, you can see that the market really follows this uh, FIBO very nicely. That it hits the high and then it came down to the 61.8, rebounded, rebounded, rebounded. So three times it hit 61.8, it rebounded. Now this time around, it did not hit 61.8 and rebounded. So this actually shows strength. I repeat, this actually shows strength. Okay, so this one's right down somewhere. But the thing is this. You also notice that the moving average 200 is a very strong resistance at the moment right now. So that means that the market has to stay above the MA 200 so that it will be, they will form the strength that we need to see. But if the market hit the MA 200 and fail to go any higher and pull back, now this is very crucial. Huh? If the market actually uh, hit the MA 200 but fail to cross it convincingly, and if ever pull back, this will bring the market really down very big time. Okay, be very careful of this. Please um, write it down somewhere. Just give me a minute. Now. This is not the line here. Wait, it should be here. Yep. Okay, so let me just redraw my drawing. If the market actually ever <coughs> hit the MA 200 and fail to close above it convincingly and goes down again, now, because this time around the market goes up, it's not on a rally, it's basically pushed up by the news. If the market fail and it really does this, right, the selling can be so bad that it may break the 14,000 level altogether, yeah? So that's the reason why I want you to write down this because this area here is a very big chunk of uh, uh, meat that uh, traders must be very careful because if the market fail to cross it, right, the selling can be really, very drastic. But I don't think the selling will come so soon because I say again, most likely you're going to test the MA200. So that's the reason why, you know, you can see in general perspective itself, the market today is recovering now as we're talking right now, okay? So this is very important. Please take note of that, yeah? Okay. Okay, let's look at the market now. Look at Hang Seng. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful, right? This is so beautiful on Hong Kong. Now, Hong Kong market itself, right? You can take a look, yeah? Hong Kong this morning, it was above the MA30. So momentum-wise, it's very bullish already, okay? But the trending is still downward. So that's why momentum is more important. So when the market stays above OP, it was generally a buy, yeah? And when the market purposely touched the MLP itself, right, it was even beautiful. It touches MLP, can you see that? It touches MLP, touches it, and almost instantaneously rebounded. And of course, when you cross the pivot one itself, it is so bullish, it's a classic buy. So where is the resistance right now, right here? Yes, we are having resistance right now at 24,696 level. I believe that this will be the resistance for today. Now, if it goes any higher, wow, this is gonna go up all the way. If you're gonna go any higher, it'll be 24,985, okay? So I don't think it'll go there today. I think this is gonna be the resistance for today, unless I'm wrong. So watch out for this. I think 24,696 will be a good level for you to take some profit already, yeah? Consider doing that. Okay, let's look at the Dow Jones now. I think that's the main thing that everybody will working out. Now for Dow Jones, please take a piece of paper and stand by to hear what I say to you. Now the Dow Jones today is below the MA30, is below the MA200, and it's below MLP. 
So it's actually very bearish. But the problem is, it's now above OP. Because why? Because of the PBOC thingy in Hong Kong. So as long as the Dow Jones stays above OP and um, it's going up, you don't do any short selling first. You wait for a while. You wait for a while, okay? If you want to short sell this Dow Jones, then you look out for KTR minus one, minus two, uh, sorry, KTR plus one, plus two, or plus three, okay? Because the KSI is red in color and it's an uptick rate. So which means that, right, the market will be pushed up first and then likely come down later. So where is the KTR uh, plus one, two, three, right? So take note, everybody. Now turn on your system. You can see it straight away on your screen. Okay, you can see right now. Okay, so where is the KTR plus one first? Okay, the KTR plus one is right here on the screen. Can you see that? And that is 35,000. 174, okay? Now, uh, pivot one is 35,196. So that means that 35,174 KTR plus one and uh, pivot one is actually a stack nearby. So I believe that there should be some resistance around here. So 35,174 will be the resistance that I suspect will be there. So if the market hits there and couldn't go higher, then the selling will come back down again. Now, of course, if the market actually breaks above it, then it will go higher already. So that's why as long as you want to trade on this, you must wait for it to hit at least to the KTR plus one. Now, KTR plus two is 35,305, which happened to coincide nearby to MA200. So of course, if the market can push up higher, this level will be even better. But I would like to say that most likely the market may not go to 35,305 because the European market did not see the selling at the back. So likely they will pressure the market a bit more. The current movement now when the market is moving up is because of this, um, the PBOC thingy, right? Okay. So now as I'm speaking to you right now, the market have just tapped on the KTR uh, plus one. Yeah, just nice live right now showing to you. So let's see whether later on the market will actually resist. Yeah, so watch out for that. Okay, so got an idea now. Okay, let's look at the uh, next market, which is the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ also say the same thing, exactly the same, yeah. The NASDAQ is below the MA30, below MA200, below MLP. So same thing again, you cannot sell now because it's trading above OP, remember? Even the three lines are calling for sell, but the market is trading above OP, you cannot sell just like that. This is very dangerous. You need to hit technical point, then you can sell. So where the technical point? Now, one of them recommend to you is MLP. The MLP itself is 15,153, okay? So this is the MLP and um, the market is going to reach there. Once it touches there itself, right, you can consider to sell if it stays below it. That means it must touch MLP and then come down. Uh, then you can sell, okay? That's one way. If not, you put it into the intraday look at any KTR available. Okay, so you can see on the screen right now that the KTR plus one has broken it without holding back, so you cannot sell. So KTR plus two is 15148, which happened to be very near to MLP, right? 15153. So with this two level, okay, I will recommend you that if the market hits here and couldn't go up, uh, then you can consider to sell. But because it's above pivot one, right? Still not the best. Let it come down to below pivot. Ah, then this will be a safer bet itself. Okay, got it? All right, for those who got it and understand what I'm trying to say here and you find it's very clear and good, please key number one right now. Sorry, number two, sorry. Key number two right now, yeah? Give me one minute. I need to do some whistling of phone when yeah? Uh, apparently, when I was young, I had asthma. And my last asthma that was like many, many years ago, probably 20 years ago. So according to the doctor, they tell me that uh, COVID had this very powerful thing to dig out all your problem. And one of them is since I got asthma, right? So it may actually ignite my asthma. So that's why I have never used my pump, you know, the, the inhaler for longest of time. And finally, I have to use it. <laughs> and of course, also... Uh, a lot of phlegm building up on my, my body, even though I'm not taking any sweet stuff. So this is how COVID works, yeah? Very incredible. Okay, so good, guys. I got you guys like the sharing. Okay, got it? Cool, right? Okay. 
S&P 500. Now this is S&P 500. It is exactly the same thing, but something different. Let's take a look. Huh? This one, please write it down somewhere here. Now the opening price of today actually right, is below MA 200, below MLP, below MA 30. So momentum is also still down. Yeah? But the key point is this. It has climbed above MA 200. So that means that now, right, S&P is more like, you know, supported by this number, 4541, okay? This number is a very crucial number. As long as S&P stays above 4541, the S&P may be going up. Why? Because the KSI jump was there yesterday. So that means that there are some buying in the market. Yeah, 4541, okay? So watch out for this. Now, 4561 is the MLP for today. And this level itself, right, has to break. If the SMB can break 4561, likely it will rebound. But if the market cannot go, five, go past 4561 and then goes back down to 4541, oh, this is going to be bad because the selling can be drastic. Yeah. Let me explain this to you. Okay. If you look at it right now, if the market comes down, right, it can go all the way down to 4487, okay, 4487 for the S&P. So upside itself, right, we look at 4561 four, first, let's look at the upside first. The downside, once it loses 4541, the market can break all the way down to 4487, yeah? So this is how incredible our system is. Every numbers are already prepared for you, really. you just have to follow through, yeah? Not difficult at all. Okay, done? Okay, good. Now, this is the Nasdaq, uh, Nikkei, sorry. Now, Nikkei this morning, you can see also below MA30, MA200, and also below MLP. But because it stays above OP right now, you cannot short it. And this morning, it purposely hit the pivot one and rebounded, yeah? So same thing again, if you go to MLP here, then look out for resistance, okay? At 27875, okay? Now, for DAX, you can see on DAX, it's a bit of cluttered here as well, but you can see it's actually a bit of mixed back. Uh, it's above the MA200, so it's being hold up, but it's being resisted by the MA30. That's why yesterday the market hit that hit the MA and came down. Let me just show it to you with the um, chart a bit better, yeah? Now you can take a look over the chart, it's beautiful. So yesterday, you can see very beautiful that the, this is the chart here. So the star was there, and the market congregated at this MA. So once the market failed to break above MA, it sell down. You can see that every time we hit the MA, couldn't uh, couldn't uh, break above it, right? The market will sell down. Very simple, all right? Our system, very easy to use. As long as you, are, you like technical analysis, this is going to be a stroll in the park. All right, so in short, it's all right. As long as the market stays at MA 200, the DAX will be able to some, some support. But in the afternoon, if let's say the market breaks MA 30, MA 200, right, this will spell trouble. And this may bring the DAX all the way down to 15,490 level, yeah? Now, one thing to note is that the German uh, yield actually went past the positive figure. That means the bond prices came down. So this is actually very scary. That means that the bond traders are actually dumping the bonds, okay? They're dumping the bonds, okay? That's why the yield is going up. So why are they dumping the bonds? That means they lost confidence in probably the, in the government or some something around the area. So that's the reason why it's all right. This is going to be a bit dangerous for DAX. Huh? So traders for DAX, just take note of that, yeah? Okay, all right. Let's go crude oil. Now, crude oil continue to trade higher. I already tell you crude oil, ever since when crude oil breaks $79, I told you crude oil go to $82 and it's not $85. Okay, so crude oil today, MLP is at $85.34. So as long as the market stays above $85.34 right now, the market is still on the way up. And how high can crude oil go today? It may go all the way to $87, okay? But of course, the thing is this, downside is limited because you can see the buying is so strong itself. So it's going to be very difficult to buy, to, to short the crude oil, yeah? I think buy is a better choice, okay? Any pullback will be a good buy. All right, so we have uh, over here itself is all the indices, okay? So look at the gold, okay? Let's look at gold price right now. Now, gold is off a little bit right now. Okay, now good look at the crude oil, uh, gold now. Now, gold is above MA200, MA30, and above MLP. So it's a classic buy, okay? 
I'm sorry, it's a good buy. It's not classic buy. Sorry, pardon my English. Okay, it's a good buy. Why I don't use classic? Because classic belongs for period. Yeah, my bad. Okay, so for gold, if the market stays above OP, now OP is 1840. So only if gold stays above 1840, then you can buy more gold. Uh, the first target is 1846, and the next level itself will be 1859. Okay, so 1846 will be the level to look out for gold upside. Now, I believe that gold 1846, once it breaks through, right, it will fly up easily to 1859 if it can stay above 1846. All right, the KSI is green in color. There's no blue bars holding it back. So there's a good chance that gold could be trading towards 1846. Yeah, but it has to stay above OP first. The main thing is this OP is very crucial in such a, uh, in a market like this right now. Yep. Okay. Now, how about silver? Let's take a look at silver. Now, silver, the last two days blast up because I told you guys, if gold is a shoot, silver will follow up very fast with small speculative. So KSI was green and there's no, blah, no blue bar. So the market upside is there. And um, silver has break past MA30, right? So when the market, silver crossed uh, $23, it's already a buy because momentum wise, it's already given you the green light. And of course it should all the way to MA30, 200, which is already at 23.77. So that means that now both for, for silver is actually above MA30 and MA200. So it's bullish at the moment and the target should be able to see $24.47. So with that expectation itself, right, that means that if we're going to see it right, the overall aspect is this, that the gold price will likely be able to go higher. So not now, maybe in the evening period, then gold should be able to see 1846, yeah? So take note of that in terms of my figure and timing, okay? Okay, so we have all those already. Then we look at the last two is the Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now this is, uh, this is Ethereum first. Now you can see Ethereum wise is all right, is trading, okay? wait a minute, yeah. Ethereum is still trading lower. Now, Ethereum already have been going down for quite a while already. And I still think that Ethereum will likely be going down lower. I still think it will go lower. Yes, right. 29.70. Yes. 29.70 or 2820. Now, why is that so? Why am I so bearish in crypto market? Because I told you guys that once granddaddy, uh, this uh, Jerome Powell, is going to take out liquidity for the market and sell, right? Cryptocurrency will be hit. And this is not the first time I'm saying this. I'm saying this quite a while already. And you, you can see that, you know, this is where they, it went parabolic. I believe that was how they, they fooled all people to go in. And then after that, so every time when the market recovery, right, you can see that the low, the high got lower. So without a doubt itself, right, you look at it, it will likely come down to here. So I'm going to be very strong on this. I believe that Ethereum will come down to 1820. Now, but hit 1820, if you think you want to buy, yes, you can buy. 1820 can try. Okay, that's Ethereum. Yeah. So take note of that. Bitcoin. Mm. Now, Bitcoin, same fate because why? Bitcoin is the same thing. They are all running on easy monetary policy. So, in short, if it goes down and sell, right, it will be a good buy to hit at 38,000. Yeah. So only when you hit 38,000, then again, look at the buy at Bitcoin. Now it's 41,000, nope, not a good buy. Wait, 38,000, give it a try, okay? Now, if 38,000 cannot hold, this is scary. You know why? Because if it doesn't hold, it can go all the way to this point here, and that is 32,000, I repeat, or 31,800 to be precise. So, okay, I'm gonna put it up front again. If the market fail to stay up, it will go up, it will go down 38,000 first. So 38,000, you can buy some, just buy a bit more. Yeah, just buy a little bit, yeah? But if 38,000 fail, well, the market can really go down all the way. It could be a flash crash down to 31,800. So please be mindful on these crypto traders. I know that some of you are buying for long term. If you buy long term, then you don't care, don't bother. But you're asking me, it's that near term itself, I can tell you that the sellers are still very strongly available and there's no sign at the moment right now unless something I'm wrong or maybe some funds coming to push or some country decide to use it as their own coin, but not now. I think the market is not ready yet, okay? All right, that will be all for today. Okay, guys, thank you for listening to me. I'm so sorry I cannot make you excited because today I already, my voice, you can see is breaking up a little bit, but I'm doing my best to do this for you. I hope that you enjoy this session. All right, that will be all for today. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Take care and I'll see you tomorrow, same time at 11 a.m. Okay, bye-bye guys. Thank you very much.
Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.